Hi, chem students. It's Ms. Horn, and welcome to a tutorial over acids and bases. Please have out something to take notes with. Okay, I'm going to start by describing properties of acids and bases. The first thing I want to point out is I have a very simple pH scale drawn here. Uh, realize the pH scale starts at 0, it goes to 14, and I've marked 7 in the middle, which is completely neutral, which would be something like water. So less than 7 are your acids. If it has a pH of greater than 7, that is a base. Okay, so acids. They're going to contain more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. They have a pH of less than 7, and they are acidic. They taste sour. They will turn litmus paper red. They are electrolytes, so they will conduct electricity. They will react with metals to produce hydrogen gas. On the other hand, bases. They're going to contain more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. Their pH is greater than 7. We call this alkaline. They're going to taste bitter and feel slippery. They will turn litmus paper blue. They will also conduct electricity because bases also are electrolytes. And they will react with acids to produce a salt and water. This is known as neutralization. Okay, so some examples of common household acids and bases that hopefully you're familiar with. Um, notice here in parentheses, I have the name of the acid or the base. You can find this on the back of your labels whenever you are drinking or eating these food items. So be aware of them. Okay, so common acids. We've got lemon juice and other citrus juices will contain citric acid and absorbic acid. Tomato juice definitely has ascorbic acid. Vinegar is acetic acid. And all of your carbonated beverages will have carbonic acid in them. Okay, bases. You've got something like ammonia, drain cleaner, your antacid will contain calcium carbonate, bleach, baking soda, and your soaps and shampoos are all bases as well. All right, there's two theories I need you to know for acids and bases. The first one is the Arrhenius theory, which defines an acid as some substance containing hydrogen ions in the formula. A base will have hydroxide ions in the formula. So these are simple examples of nitric acid and sodium hydroxide. All right, they pretty much follow the rules that we learned in nomenclature. Okay, as we know, acids start with hydrogen and bases and then hydroxide for the most part, and that would be the Arrhenius theory. Now, there's also the Bronsted-Lowry theory which says that an acid is a hydrogen donor and a base is a hydrogen acceptor. All right, so this describes hydrochloric acid as an acid because it will donate its hydrogen. And then here we have ammonia as a base, which is not a hydroxide. However, it does accept hydrogen ions. So the Bronsted-Lowry theory includes the terminology conjugate acid and conjugate base. So let's take a look at that. A conjugate acid is the particle formed when a base has accepted a proton. Every base has a conjugate acid. A conjugate base is the particle formed when an acid has donated a proton. Every acid has a conjugate base. So let's look at some examples. A conjugate acid-base pair consists of the two substances related by loss or gain of single hydrogen ion. Identify the acid base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base in the following reaction. So let's do this together. Okay, my first reaction is hydrochloric acid in the presence of water, forming the hydronium ion and chloride ion. Okay, so hydrochloric acid is our acid here because it is donating hydrogen to water. So because water is accepting the hydrogen ion, it is acting as the base. So if we look on the product side, we have the hydronium ion, which is the conjugate acid, since it is what is formed when the base has accepted the proton. Then we have chloride here, which is our conjugate base, because it is the particle formed when the acid donated a proton. Okay, So this is the conjugate base because it looks like hydrochloric acid over here, just missing the hydrogen ion. Okay. So the second example, we have ammonia in the presence of water producing ammonium 
and hydroxide ion. We have water donating its hydrogen ion to ammonia. So water is acting as an acid here, and ammonia is acting as the base since it is the acceptor. Okay? So if we look on the product side, our conjugate acid, which is the particle form when the base is accepted a proton. So basically it will look just like your base, except with the extra proton or extra hydrogen, okay? And then you've got your conjugate base, which looks like our acid, except it's missing a hydrogen. Okay, so just a little review of the nomenclature of acids and bases. Acids are composed of a hydrogen followed by an anion. If the acid formula contains oxygen in the anion, such as H2SO4, it is known as an oxyacid. There are three rules based on the anion name when naming an acid. Okay, so the first example, hydrogen plus an anion ending in ide. The acid is a hydroblanket acid. Okay, so if you look at our examples here, you've got hydrogen and then some anion that is just an element. It's not a polyatomic ion. Okay, so HCl is hydrochloric acid and HF is hydrofluoric acid. And like I said, this should be reviewed. Okay, our second rule is if you have the hydrogen and then an anion ending in 8. Remember what I ate was icky. So here we have nitrate. So we're going to name this acid nitric acid. And here we've got carbonate. So it is carbonic acid. In blue, I have written, note, when the anion contains sulfur or phosphorus, the roots are sulfur and phosphor, respectively, not sulfur and phosphor. So H2SO4 is sulfuric acid, not sulfic acid. And H3PO4 is phosphoric acid, not phosphic acid. We see a lot of errors with this little note I have here. So make sure to remember this, write it down, maybe put a big star next to it. Okay, my third rule for naming acids. The snake bite was poisonous. So if you've got hydrogen and an anion ending in ite, the acid name is blank us acid. So we've got HNO2, which is nitrite. So this becomes nitrous acid. We have ClO2, which is chlorite. So this becomes chlorous acid. So as a little recap, your hydroacids are just hydrogen and then another element. What I ate was icky, so any polyatomic ion ending in eight changes to ick. And then the snake bite was poisonous, so any polyatomic ion ending in ite changes to us with acids. Okay, so going backwards. If I give you the name and I want you to write the formula, there's something you need to figure out. You know that it's going to start with hydrogen. That is something we learned a long time ago. But you need to figure out what the anion is and then crisscross. So hydrobromic acid, when it's hydro, you know it's hydrogen crisscrossed with just another element. Bromic means it's crisscrossed with bromide. So when you crisscross hydrogen and bromide, which has a negative one charge, just get HBr. Okay, acetic acid. We take it and change it back to eight, so the anion is acetate. Acetate is C2H3O2 and has a negative one charge. When we crisscross them, we get HC2H3O2. Phosphorus acid, so us goes back to ite. That means we're looking for the phosphite ion, which is PO33 minus. Now, when we crisscross this time, you have to crisscross hydrogen, which is plus one, with phosphite, which is negative three. So we get H3PO3. Don't forget to crisscross. Writing base names from formulas. There are many substances that act as bases in chemistry with various formulas, but we're only going to focus on hydroxides and also ammonia. Hydroxide bases are composed of a metal ion followed by hydroxide. 
Okay, so the cation here is sodium, so the name is sodium hydroxide. The cation is magnesium, so our name is magnesium hydroxide. And then lithium, so lithium hydroxide. And please do not forget, we must have memorized ammonia NH3. Not to be confused with ammonium NH4+. We also need to be able to go backwards with bases. So if I give you the name, I'm going to need the formula. So you just take the cation, in this case potassium, which is K positive 1, and crisscross it with hydroxide, which is OH minus 1. So here I've got KOH, calcium hydroxide. Now this time calcium has a plus 2 charge. So when we crisscross it with hydroxide, it's CA, don't forget your parentheses, OH2. The 2 applies to only what's inside the parentheses. So I've got two hydroxides and one calcium. Aluminum hydroxide, aluminum is plus 3. So again, when we crisscross, we need those parentheses, AL, OH, and then the 3. So what we learned in this video. First, we talked about the properties of acids and bases. We went through some household examples. We learned about the Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry theory, which includes conjugate acid and conjugate base. And then we did some acid-base nomenclature review. Those are the things that you should have learned from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understood everything. Please write down your questions so that we can answer them in class. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks.